Hello sustainable growers, welcome in this video. Today we're going to talk about trout in aquaponics and especially rainbow trout. How to grow them, why is it so, such a good fish for aquaponics, what are the specific techniques to improve the production. So trout is one of the few fish that have been domesticated by human. When I say domesticated, I just mean that we raise the fish for a few generations and every time we select the fish that are, that are showing the best behavior and the best growth to reproduce them. So there is what we call a selection, selection of the best uh, fish for aquaponics. So every generation we improve the breed, the breed become more performant, uh, more normally resistant to disease, which is Basically, we can discuss this point. Um, and uh, the, the fish become more used to be handled by humans. So that's why uh, trout is such a specific fish. And today we're going to see a few points uh, why we, we think trout are very interesting for aquaculture and for aquaponics. So the first point is that trout are growing quite fast. You know, they, they grow quite quickly. A uh, fish can reach the plate size in nine months. Uh, if you compare it to, to uh, silver perch, silver perch will take three to, uh, to four years to reach this same size. When I say plate size, you know, it's 450, 350 grams, so it's still a small fish. But you can reach this size in nine months, while uh, with other fish, it takes way longer. So trout are very interesting because they grow quite quickly. Uh, the second reason why a lot of people are growing trout is that they basically they develop a very interesting aroma, very good taste. The flesh is a very high quality. So if you look at freshwater fish, uh, trout is among the best quality uh, eating fish. So when you grow trout in aquaponics, most of the time uh, the, the flesh of the fish is very tasty and the color of the fish, the color of the flesh is white and actually the color of the flesh is dependent on the type of food that you're going to give to your fish. If you look at fish from aquaculture most of the time the fish farmers are trying to get red uh, trout I mean not red but a bit orange you know this specific pink orange color that's what the customer want so that's what they, they put some colorant into the food but in aquaponics um, if you use some classic fish food the fish flesh is going to be more white so uh, I made a special video about it, uh, fish flesh color, have a look uh, in, on YouTube and uh, you're going to find it if you are really interested to grow some, uh, some trout with a pink flesh. But otherwise uh, you just grow it with normal fish food, a fish food that is adapted to the trout and you're going to have a white flesh trout. But that is going to have the same aroma, the same texture, the same taste as uh, the trout that you get from the shop. So the color has nothing to do with the quality, right? It's just some colorant that we put into the fish food. But the, the trout develop a very, very interesting flesh, very interesting texture and flavor. And that's why so many people are growing trout around the planet. So in terms of requirement, trout need a certain level of oxygen and if you compare it to other fish such as uh, tilapia, carps, uh, catfish and you know, all those type of other fish that are really famous in aquaponics, trout need actually a bit more oxygen than the other fish. In aquaculture we try to maintain uh, the oxygen level above 7 mg of oxygen per liter of water. In aquaponics what we do, we just put a nice aerator, you know a little air pump with uh, an air stone inside the, the fish tank and it fulfills the need of the fish. So we don't need a specific equipment, but just be aware that trout don't accept very low quantity of oxygen such as other fish. So that's a specific requirement that trout have. Another requirement that trout have is the temperature. So trout are cold water fish. So when I say cold water, I mean they are really adapted to colder countries such as Europe, uh, North America, you know those countries where basically the water is, uh, is never reaching a temperature above 25 degrees. Trout above 23 degrees they start to struggle and they are not going to stay alive for long. So what we want in aquaponics is to keep them in conditions where the water is below 23 degrees. At 18 degrees that's where you got a really good growth, 18 to 20 degrees is okay and after, after that, uh, they really struggle. So if you, if you want to give, put them in the best conditions, try to maintain your, your water between 16 and 18 degrees, and they're going to grow like crazy. 
In terms of water quality, uh, trout are a bit sensitive, so they are not as hardy as other fish such as goldfish, tr uh, carp, tilapia. Uh, trout needs to have a, a good quality and a good filtration. You need to have a certain filtration in your aquaponic setup. When I'm talking about filtration, I'm talking about biological filtration, so you need to make sure that you don't have too much ammonia and too much nitrates into your water. Uh, you know, when other fish such as tilapia can accept um, very high concentration of ammonia and nitrate. They stay alive, they stress, but they stay alive. Trouts after 0.5 ppm, so part per million or milligram per liters of ammonia or nitrate, they would struggle. So always try to keep uh, those parameters very low. And if you see that your water uh, concentration is, is increasing in terms of ammonia and nitrate, renew the water and decrease the quantity of fish. Basically it's always because you got too many fish for the capacity of your system. So you can add more filtration, more biological filtration, or you can simply decrease the quantity of fish. Uh, in terms of nitrate, it's the same thing uh, when some fish are accepting some very high concentration of nitrate, trout start to struggle after 50 ppm, 50 parts per million or 50 milligrams per liter. So always try to keep your nitrate concentration into the, the aquaponic setup below 50 ppm. Again, if you got too much nitrate, that's okay because nitrate is, a, is a, the food for the plants. It just means you don't have enough vegetables on your system, but you can definitely use this water to water your classic garden. And in this case, you just have to add new water in your system and it dilutes the concentration of nitrate. So you don't waste the water directly because you use this water to water your normal garden and it's gonna be, uh, you're going to add some fertilizer. I mean, not fertilizer, but nutrients. And in the same time, you basically um, decrease the concentration of nitrate into your water. So with trout, it's very important to maintain those three parameters at a low concentration to make sure that they are growing in good conditions. So if you want to grow your trout and if you want to really grow a good production, if you want to maximize the production of trout, you want to grow the trout that you want to keep them small. So what happened is that basically you got two sex, obviously male and females. Um, males are maturating after one year, right? Which means that when I talk about maturation, I'm talking about sexual maturation. So trout, when they reach uh, the adult size, they're going to start to create some uh, gametes, you know, the, the reproductive gametes such as the sperm or the ovules. When they do that, uh, the, the males are going to put a lot of energy to create the sperm and therefore this energy is lost. You don't get it for the flesh, so the trout stop growing. I mean, it continues growing, but it's slowed down. So the conversion of the food is not as good and uh, what you see is that uh, after a while, your trout don't grow so quickly. So what is important to do is to grow females. Females, they grow only, uh, they maturate only after two years, which means that you got two years to reach a, a decent size and after only, they start to maturate and they start to basically produce some eggs. So when the trout are producing eggs, again, they start to slow down the growth and they put the energy into the eggs. So as a fish farmer, as an aquaponics farmer, what you want is to grow the fish before it reach maturation, which means that during this time, it's going to put all the energy into the growth of the muscles, into the growth of the body. So you're going to see the weight of the fish is going to increase very quickly when they are young. And when they reach the two years, they start to decrease. The fish farmers are very aware of this point. That's why they grow 100% females. And in aquaponics, when you go to the fish farm and you buy trout, in 95% of the case, you're going to have 100% females trout. You are not going to have any males. So if you want to know how they do that, look at my video, how to maximize fish production. Uh, you're going to find the video into uh, Melbourne Aquaponics videos and it's going to blow your mind how they make those 100% females populations. But here we are not, <laughs> we are not going to spend any time talking about this specific topic. We're going to leave it because I already talked about it in the other video. But what I really want to say is that if you want to maximize the growth of your fish, just grow the fish up to one kilo, one kilo and a half and then up you just harvest them and you put new small fish, that's where you're going to have the most growth. It's very easy to understand. If you would put one kilo of small fish, they're going to double their weight in a few weeks. So you're going to have two kilos of fish in a few weeks only. But if you put only one fish of one kilo, 
it's not gonna go in two, it's, gonna, it's not gonna double his weight, it's not gonna go from one kilo to two kilo in a few weeks, it's gonna take months to, to do that. So you understand that it's easier to grow more, more weight of fish with small fish than with big fish. You just need to have a lot of small fish and not just a few big fish. That's where you maximize the production. So the trout develop eggs, right? After two years, if you keep them, if you want to keep them after two years, they're going to develop some eggs. So it's not real eggs, actually. The eggs is when you got the fecundation of the ovule with the, with the sperm. But before that, they create what we call ovocytes. They are not even, they are not even ovule yet. They are just before the ovule, actually. And uh, they develop them inside their, their body. But the rainbow trout, they generally can't really spawn by themselves. So you have to strip them. If you want to grow really big trout, you have to strip, which means to remove the eggs from the, from the body of the female. You don't have to open the female, just when the, the, the female is ready, when the, the eggs are ready, they are mature. If you catch the female and you just uh, give it a massage of the, of the belly, you're going to be able to basically remove the eggs from the body and you can keep them on a little bucket and then you can put a bit of salt on it and you can eat them. They are really good. It's called trout caviar. You can find it in some supermarkets. It's very, very good to eat. Uh, so keep in mind that you have to do that. If you don't remove the eggs from the body of the female, most of the time the, the eggs start to rot inside the body and uh, the female start to have some infection and they don't most of the time they fall sick and they die. So if you want to keep a, a big fish, you have to remove the eggs. In aquaculture, what they do when they want to produce really big trout, uh, they use triploid trout, which is trout that, that are basically three, three chromosomes, not two. And therefore, uh, they don't develop any, uh, any eggs, they are sterilized. So because they are sterilized, uh, they, they basically don't create any eggs and therefore they only put the growth into the flesh. So they grow very fast and the fish farmers are able to get some really nice big fish without having to strip or to do any specific thing and without uh, losing some energy into the eggs. So in terms of fish food, trout, uh, as I said before, they are quite domesticated. So the fish farmers have developed some really, really good fish food that is really adapted to the needs of trout. So if you are keeping trout in aquaponics, you may be interested to give them some live food, which is great. But if you are using fish food pellets or dry food, so make sure that you buy a fish food that is adapted to the trout. Trout are actually predators and they need a specific quantity of fish meal into their food. If they don't get that, they're going to struggle to grow. You know, they need a lot of omega-3 and polyunsaturated fat that come from the fish meal. So make sure that you use a fish food that is adapted to the need of trout. In terms of behavior, trout are predators, which means that uh, they got this uh, genetically this ability to be dominant and to try to catch other fish. So when you keep your trout, you need to keep them uh, all of the same size. If you mix the sizes, you can't, you know, you can't mix a fish of one year with a fish of two years, otherwise the big one is going to eat the small one. But what is also very important to understand is that they got the territorial behavior, which means that uh, by nature they claim their territory. And if you put few fish together in a tank, they're gonna, one of them is going to become dominant and it's going to chase the others around and the others are going to be stressed and they are not going to grow and one of them, the dominant, is going to grow, is going to eat all the food, is going to grow super fast while the others are, are basically stressed and not eating, not feeling well so sometimes they fall sick and sometimes they simply die. So you want to avoid that and this happens when you put a few fish in a big tank but if you put a lot of fish then you got this kind of society effect where the fish are uh, growing together but they don't really recognize each other and therefore you don't have any that is going to become dominant. So with predator-use fish you have to maintain them in a minimum density. So what I recommend is to have 10 kilo of fish per cubic meters of water. So you know that in aquaculture we can push them up to above 100 kilos of fish per cubic meter of water which is 10% of fish per water, that's, that's a lot. But in aquaponics I recommend 10 kilo, 10 to 20 you know. Uh, it's really good because in, at this level, the fish can't really recognize each other, you, so you still have this cool effect, you know, the society effect. So the fish are not going to attack each other, but in the same time, there are, not, there are not too many of them, so they are not too much stressed, which means that they are, they are going to grow in good, good conditions and you are not going to have too many diseases on your fish. 
So talking about disease, uh, there are a few diseases that can attack the trout. First, there are some virus. So the virus they attack the fish, especially in cold water. So what you want to do if you have virus on your fish, is try to increase the water temperature. It's not very easy. But in aquaponics, most of the time we don't have this virus. It's more in the big farms. Uh, in the big farms, when the water is cold, yes, we can have some virus and it can just kill the whole population and there is no much they can do. The only thing you can do when you've got a virus is to give better conditions for the fish, hoping that the body of the fish is going to be able to fight against the virus. But there is no real solution to, do, to basically save your fish. So the best thing is really to prevent it and to put your fish in good conditions at the very beginning. So it's going to avoid them to uh, develop the disease. Another type of disease that you can have is bacteria. So on trout, there are a few bacteria that are really well known uh, and uh, when they are onto your fish, they can just jump from one trout to the other and uh, you can have the disease everywhere. So some of them are called uh, Yersiniosas and uh, Furunculosa. So those two ones uh, in, uh, in fish farms, they sometimes use some uh, vaccine. So they, they inject the fish with uh, a vaccine and the fish develop the immune system against those specific diseases. In aquaponics, we are not going to inject the fish. Because we are in very low density, uh, we have very few chance to get those diseases, so we, we just take the risk. But most of the time, the fish don't fall sick, don't get those specific diseases. So, uh, in uh, aquaculture as well, when they see the disease happening and when the fish are started to fall sick, they use a lot of antibiotics to kill the disease because they are bacteria, right? In aquaponics, we can't use any antibiotics because uh, it will affect also the bacteria of the system, right? So we don't want to use any antibiotics and even it's completely against what we want. We want to produce a food, a food that is sustainable and healthy. That's the aim of aquaponics. That's why we spend a bit of time and we give so much love to our garden. So we are not going to put any pesticide or any antibiotics in the system. We want to grow the fish as uh, natural as possible. That's why we work at giving the best conditions for the fish. In this case, we avoid the disease. But what can happen on the fish is the third type of disease, it's the parasites. So there are different types of parasites. There are some little crustaceans, uh, koshia is one of them. So they can develop on the skin of the fish, you know, on the scales, on the fins and in the gills. Unfortunately, those, uh, those uh, little uh, parasites are quite common. They, it's not very rare to see them. And in the fish farms, they are everywhere, every day. They have to treat with chemicals to basically try to minimize this quantity of parasites. In aquaponics, we are in low density. So again, we hope to not have too many of them. But sometimes they, they, they come. Uh, same as fungus. You know, fungus, they can grow on the, on the skin of the fish. And they can happen as well in aquaponics, especially if the fish are a bit stressed or if, it, if the water is not in the specific range of temperature that the fish like. So if you got those diseases, uh, have a look at the specific video I made, uh, how to, uh, to treat your fish against disease or something like this. I made a specific video about, uh, about disease on fish. And uh, basically what I recommend is to uh, fish your fish and to put them in a salt bath because the salt uh, is going to attack the parasites. You know, if you, if you gives your fish a salt bath around 10 grams per liter of water. Uh, it's going to basically kill the parasites. The parasites are going to fall down and then you can put your fish back into your fish tank. It's going to, they're going to be clean from parasites. So that's one of the techniques we use to get rid of the disease in aquaponics. Uh, another type of trout that is very interesting. We're still into the rainbow trout, but now it's a golden trout. Golden trout are the same species as a rainbow trout, but the only difference is that they develop a specific color. So if you look at the color of a golden trout, they're going to be all yellow, which is fantastic for us because we, we like to see the fish and in a pond, you know, the pond that's often black. So when you put a rainbow trout in a black pond, you don't see it because the trouts are gray black as well. And uh, basically they adapt their color to the color of the, of the pond. So you basically can't see a trout in a black pond. But when you put a golden trout, then it's all yellow. So you really see it and it looks amazing. I mean, it's almost an ornamental fish such as goldfish, you know. So the good thing is that the golden trout, they look good, but also they taste good because they taste exactly the same as a rainbow trout. So they look exceptional, they taste exceptional, and they have exactly the same requirements than the rainbow trout. So if you can have some, yeah, I really recommend to grow some in aquaponics. They are really good fish to have. If you want to put fish in a dam or outside in an exposed area, don't put um, 
yellow trout or golden trout because unfortunately the birds can spot them very easily and as soon as you got a predator they're going to attack them and they're going to find them they're going to catch them super easily so if you put trout on a dam i would still recommend to use normal rainbow trout and not the golden trout So you may wonder where to find trout because yes, today I sell you these spaces. It's a really good spaces to have. I, I kept a lot of trout and I grew a lot of them in aquaponics and I really like these spaces. But where to find them? Well, there is no real uh, super where to find them. There is no uh, one, one shop to find little, uh, little trout. We call them fingerlings. But what you can do is to go to the closest fish farm. So the trout farms, most of the time, uh, they are going to be happy to sell you a few fish. If you, if you buy 100 of them or even 50 or 20 of them, whatever, uh, you go there and it may cost you $1 per fish or whatever. And then you go to fish home. When you go there, in the same time, you can buy the fish food that they use at the farm. So then you got the specific adapted fish food and you can grow them in aquaponics. So I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, you, you now want to grow some trout because it's really a cool fish to grow. Just make sure you are not in a tropical country because again, if your water temperature is not adapted, you are not going to be able to grow trout in good conditions. If you are new to aquaponics, don't forget to get the free guide from the description just below. Uh, this guide is going to give you all the limits and the different ratio to respect in aquaponics. It's going to give you the best step to respect in order to breed an aquaponics setup in the best conditions. Conditions. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to receive all the new video and all the new tips that I'm giving you every week. See you in the next video. Bye bye. Don't forget to get your free gift from this screen. You can also leave me a comment below the video, subscribe to the channel and see my last video. I really hope to see you soon and I wish you a fantastic success with aquaponics. Have a good crop.